Stanley Park, situated in Vancouver, is a world-renowned urban park that draws visitors from all corners of the globe. The park's lush foliage, stunning panoramas, and diverse fauna have made it a cherished icon of the city. This piece presents vintage images of Stanley Park that offer an unprecedented glimpse into the park's storied past. Stanley Park has a lengthy and storied past. Prior to British Columbia being colonized by the British during the 1858 Fraser Canyon Gold Rush, indigenous peoples had been utilizing the land for several millennia. Following colonization, non-indigenous settlers also made the most of the park's plentiful resources. In 1886, when the city of Vancouver was incorporated, the land was transformed into the city's first park. Named in honor of Lord Stanley, the 16th Earl of Derby, a British statesman who had recently been appointed Governor General, the park was formerly known as Cole Peninsula and had been designated for military fortifications to safeguard the entrance to Vancouver Harbor. The Vancouver City Council successfully sought a lease of the park in 1886, which was granted for a nominal sum of $1 per year. In September 1888, Lord Stanley inaugurated the park in his own name. Stanley Park sets itself apart from other metropolitan parks by being the product of the organic evolution of a forest and an urban area, rather than the deliberate design of a landscape architect. Superintendent W.S. Rawlings spearheaded the construction of most of the park's human-made structures between 1911 and 1937. In the post-World War II era, further points of interest were established, including an aquarium, a miniature train, and a polar bear exhibit. Despite the modern additions, a vast majority of the park remains just as heavily forested as it was in the late 1800s. Approximately 500,000 trees make up the park, with some towering as high as 76 meters, 249 feet, and aged hundreds of years. Unfortunately, due to three significant windstorms over the last century, many trees were lost and several had to be replanted, most recently in 2006. The creation of the 8.8-kilometer miles) seawall encompassing the park was initiated in 1917 and spanned multiple decades until its completion. Park Board Superintendent W.E.S. Rawlings is credited with originating the idea for the seawall and expounded on his vision in 1918. Visualizing the manifestation of such an endeavor, to fathom its implications for the park's attractions is not a challenging task. Personally, I harbor skepticism regarding the existence of comparable prospects for an integrated park and marine promenade anywhere in this continent, except for Stanley Park. James Jimmy Cunningham, an expert stonemason, dedicated an extensive 32-year tenure of his life from 1931 to 1963 towards the construction of the seawall. Cunningham diligently continued to oversee the wall's progression until his demise at the ripe age of 85. The waterfront walkway has undergone multiple extensions and is presently 22 kilometers, 14 miles, long without any interruptions, making it the world's lengthiest waterfront walkway. The Stanley Park section constitutes less than half of the whole pathway, which starts at Canada Place located in the city center, wraps around Stanley Park, goes along English Bay, loops around False Creek, and ultimately ends at Kitsilano Beach. From that juncture, a track continues westward for 600 meters, connecting to a further 12 kilometers 7.5 miles of seashores and pathways that culminate at the Fraser River's mouth. Stanley Park has been subject to violent windstorms in the past that have caused considerable damage to its forest cover. Between 1900 and 1960, 19 distinct windstorms rampaged through the park, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Over the course of the last century, the park has lost some of its most ancient trees as a result of two major windstorms, with the most recent being in 2006. The first of these occurred in 1934, where an October windstorm, followed by a snowstorm in January of the following year, caused the collapse of thousands of trees located primarily between Beaver Lake and Prospect Point. In October of 1962, the remnants of Typhoon Frida wreaked havoc in the park, 
resulting in the obliteration of a 2.4 hectare, 6 acre, virgin tract located behind the children's zoo. This, in turn, opened up a new area for a miniature railway, which replaced a smaller version built in the 1940s. Approximately 3,000 trees fell during the storm. One particular stand of lofty trees, situated in the heart of the park and a famous tourist attraction, could not survive beyond the 1960s and eventually perished. The plaque and young replacement trees that marked the location along Lover's Walk where the Seven Sisters once stood, are a poignant reminder of their popularity, which ultimately led to their demise. Historian John Atkins states that they were so widely admired that their roots were crushed by the sheer volume of visitors.